Hi, I'm Will from Venture to Rome. Thanks for joining the channel today. It's a very special day because you might remember a few videos ago, we surprised my best friend in the whole world with a brand new Metal Cloak four and a half inch game changer suspension. No way! Are you no. kidding? No way! If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it right now. It is just pure candy. It is so great. We gotta put the suspension on. Here's the thing, we've never done anything like this before. Now, Chris and I are no strangers to turning wrenches, but this is pretty dang important. Luckily, we have a few tricks up our sleeve. My friend Nathan Muller, who has a great YouTube channel called Nathan Muller, just built a brand new shop. So we're gonna take Chris's rig over to Nathan's shop, put it up on a lift, and try to do this thing ourselves. So let's go. Just arrived at Nathan's shop and he's built like this incredible compound out here that is like a wrench turner's dream and a YouTuber's dream. I have read through the instructions online mm -hmm. and I think, I think it's not that hard to put a suspension on, but that probably means that I'm going to screw something up. If something happens to Ripley and she like falls off the lift or the suspension like just totally explodes, um, you have two Jeeps, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. one do you want to part with? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Nate has a lot of. Nate has a couple Toyota. Toyota. If you don't, if you don't remember in the last video, Chris was never sent. I have the metal club. He got a new suspension, but he never got a hat. So I put that box full of hats into the other boxes. We're gonna have him open it and maybe be surprised. Uh, I don't know. I think so. Packages. So Chris, the guys at Little Cloak, they felt really bad that you never actually got a hat. So they sent you three. Oh, much better. Uh, thanks guys. Love it. It was worth the wait. Okay, we have the tires off now. We've got it up, back up on the lift and we're just going through reading the instructions one last time to f make sure we have like sizes of tools and just the process of what's gonna come off first. Um, but we're really, really close to actually turning some wrenches. Okay. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the sway bar connectors. This is probably the easiest thing on the entire install and all it takes is a wrench and an impact driver. Yeah. That's it, first piece off, buddy. Yeah. Next, it's time to remove the front track bar. This is very simple to remove as well. It's just two bolts that come out very easily with an impact driver. Just don't make the same mistake I did. And she's out. Now it's time for the front shocks to come out. It sounds really easy. It's a 16 millimeter on top and an 18 millimeter socket on bottom to remove it. However, it was a lot harder than we thought. So Chris seems to be struggling just a little bit with getting this um, shock mount bolt off and I am enjoying the fact that I'm not working hard and he is. You guys just found out that I was going backwards. Oh, great. The first shock of four off. And if that's, if that's what we're in for for the next three, whew, I'm gonna get some sleep tonight and like eat some spinach or something because that was tough. Yeah, that was brutal. And everything is so hot now just from the friction. Uh -huh. Getting it off. I feel like it became cross threaded or something, but hopefully the other ones will go easier. We got it down enough that we could get a ratcheting wrench up there. So that's what we're using. Or I say we, oh. that's what Chris is using right now. And we're finally making some progress. We put some penetrating oil on it and it's finally starting to move. So hopefully we can get the shock out. Yeah. And I think I just found out that I was going backwards. I have a pro tip for you, which is um, before you start taking off your shock mount bolt on the top, remember which way is lefty loosey and righty tighty because if you start by tightening it down chris it makes it a lot harder and makes it take longer piece of strength well with the shocks off it was time to droop the suspension to remove the springs but we ran into an issue that would be a recurring theme later okay so we got the shocks off we've been we started to droop the front axle bit because we want to take the springs off and we ran into a brake line issue the brake lines are are just being pulled. So we're gonna take the brake lines off, droop it more so we can get that spring out without using compressors because coil compressors 
would like to kill you. So if we can avoid using those, <laughs> we can avoid a quick death, which is what we want to do. So um, Chris is going to disconnect the brake line. Um, we're going to droop a little bit more and see what happens. Swapping the brake lines isn't difficult, but it can be a little bit messy. Pro tip, put paper towels in your um, liquid pans so when it's hit, it doesn't splatter as much. All right, so you can see we've got the new uh, Metal Cloak brake line bracket installed. Let me just see if we can get a little bit closer to that. Chris is just putting it on, tightening that brake line with a 16 and a 17 mil. They're two different sizes, because why make them the same? And as soon as it gets that tightened down, it, uh, Metal Cloak gives you a clip, this clip right here that slides in and keeps that <laughs> pinned. <laughs> Chris is having a heck of a time with that. I am. Keeps it pinned um, in place. With more room to droop, the front springs came out relatively easily. Nice. Yep, and at the bump stop. Okay. So Chris, these are the uh, coil isolators from Metal Cloak that are replacing the factory ones, or the your previous ones anyway. I'm not sure if your previous <laughs> ones were factory. Yeah, I think they were the factory. I think the old ones just use, reuse the factory ones, so. And these use, um, like actually help seat the coils in there. Oh, right, so they don't kind of come off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it's supposed to, and that's the idea is to, that full droop to keep them from becoming unseated. So cool. Uh, not that I will ever droop it that far, at least not intentionally. Never say never. Yeah. Chris structure. is putting the coil isolator on, um, and we're going to have to try to droop the suspension even more because the new springs are longer than the old springs. And so we're going to disconnect uh, the drag link here, and um, that should allow it to droop. It's being supported by a jack stand underneath. We're all a little nervous about that, so we're just gonna go really slow. And we've got, also got ratchet straps on both sides just for extra safety, but we're still gonna go slow. Getting the drag link off and then getting it back on was one of the trickiest parts of this entire install. So my advice to you is to go slow, be gentle, and make sure everything's in the right place when you're doing this. Okay, we're approaching midnight. Chris and I are not as young as we used to be, so we decided to just call it a night and come back tomorrow fresh. I think we'll move faster tomorrow. Those are always like my famous last words, but let's pick it back up tomorrow. Good morning. We are back here at this beautiful shop, ready to tackle day two with putting this game changer suspension on. But before we get started, first things first, we need to have some breakfast. So we got these breakfast burritos from Los Betos that we're gonna sit down and uh, scarf. Oh my God, dude. I wish we could get these on the trail. Mm-hmm. Well, camping in the morning with one of these things, you wouldn't need to eat again until dinner. No. Okay, so I, the directions say the next thing to do is replace the, con the front control arms. So um, we have the, the lower and upper control arms laid out and uh, Metal Cloak actually includes the specifications for the four and a half inch lift. So we're gonna measure them, make sure they're the right length. Um, from what I've heard, Metal Cloak does a really good job of sending them to you with pretty close to the right measurements. So we'll check that out and um, get working on replacing those. What's the measurement? Uh, 23 and 9 sixteenths. On center. Yep, I think so. That's what we're doing anyway. So previously, Chris had put on some geo relocation brackets is what they're called, which is a really good idea if you have a lift and you don't have adjustable control arms. So to take the stock ones off, we're gonna have to take off that uh, relocation bracket as well. And then having the adjustable control arms negates the reason to have the relocation brackets. And so uh, we're gonna start working on that right now as soon as Chris gets the measurement right. Disconnecting the front upper and lower control arms at the axle was no problem at all, just a few bolts to remove. It was when we got back to the frame where the drop brackets were that we started to run into some problems. Okay, we're trying to take the, the geolocation brackets off, which both control arms are connected to. And um, the first bolt seems to be totally locked. So we think maybe some Loctite, some like red Loctite was used initially when it was installed. Uh, to remove the red Loctite, apparently you have to hit it with a torch, uh, heat up the threads, soften the Loctite, and then while it's hot, um, back the bolt out that way. 
This is where our progress came to a screeching halt. Now this is not Metal Cloak's fault and it's not Jeep's fault. This is a drop bracket. We ran into a bolt that was immovable. I'm still not sure if it was a flag nut that was in there stopping us from making any progress or if it was locked tight. No matter what it was, we were good and stuck. I that's, think that's what it is. I think it's the socket. It's breaking. breaking. Kind of our last resort is to just cut the bolt with a grinder which is what we're gonna do now. And we're up in the air on whether or not we're going to actually just replace that bolt and keep these geolocation brackets in place because the metal cloak control arms are adjustable. So we could just throw them on uh, the, and have, make them the same length as the stock control arms. Um, so a lot of it depends on what the other bolts look like and like how long Chris and I wanna spend doing this because I think we've been on this one bolt for at least an hour so. Um, Let's cut it and see what we find out. Forty-five minutes trying to cut it with other things. We got the right blade and came off no problem. Yeah, I think I might use that blade um, in Thanksgiving to cut our turkey. <laughs> That's just, a really good idea. Be like the saws all. Yeah, yeah. People will be impressed. They'll love it. Now that we got that bolt off. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we bought a new grade eight bolt that we're going to put back in there because we're going to keep that bracket on. And so we're just gonna get that thing in there, get it connected and move on because we have spent, I don't know, at least two, maybe two and a half hours on this one bolt. So we gotta move now. With the decision to keep the existing drop brackets in place, all we had to do now was take off the existing control arms and swap in the middle cloak control arms. Neither the upper nor the lower control arms gave us too much trouble, but it was a little bit of a tight fit, something we run into over and over and over again just because the JKU has had a suspension on it for 100,000 miles, and sometimes pieces of the frame have become cinched together. So getting new pieces in there meant that we had to kind of press the frame back a little bit to make room for the appropriate sized piece. That's on. Look at that gold. Gold. Looks beautiful. On the driver's side, uh, lower control arm. You can't really use a drill or a any kind of a driver to get this bolt out just because the angles aren't good. And so you got to do this with basically a little bit of muscle wrenching a ratchet and it, it you know, wasn't easy, but it is coming out. Every all the other bolts that haven't been like <laughs> locked tighted in and needed to be sheared off. Um, have been, we've been able to hit them with an impact driver and stuff. So this is the first one where I have to really muscle, but keep that in mind if you're doing this. Driver's side, you might need to get a wrench. Also, uh, if you have stock uh, lockers, if you have electronic lockers, if you have a Rubicon, the electronic front locker connects right here. So when you're drooping down this driver's side to get these springs off, be really careful of the locker connection um, so you don't accidentally like rip out your e-locker connector right here. We are putting these new pucks on. The problem is there was a hole that was drilled here in what would you call this, like the puck <laughs> receiver? <laughs> the bump stop, yeah. <laughs> the bump holder. stop here. But that hole is uh, not quite big enough, so we're gonna have to drill that out and make it just a little bit bigger so the metal cloak bolt can fit in there and hold those pucks. With the front bump stop holes drilled, all we needed to do now was droop it a little bit more so we had room to get that spring in there before putting the bump stops right, in place. Fully, fully drooped here. And it just needs a little bit of love. Oh, we got it. Oh, there it is. I mean, that's significantly bigger. So what Chris is doing here is he's tightening, tightening down the bump stops. What he's done is he's used a, uh, a wrench underneath there, a ratchet, just to hold the nut in place while he uh, works the Allen uh, wrench from above. So this is working out nicely. We've got three pucks that we use. Um, we had a three and a half inch lift on this and it was almost exactly two pucks worth, the old bump stop. So the nice thing about these uh, metal cloak bump stops is you just add one more for the extra inch and you are right where you should be in terms of these bottom bump stops. We are working up a sweat, as you can probably see. So Chris is back there, and he's about ready to do disconnected brake lines on the driver's side. We just got the control arms on. And so basically that front axle is kind of hanging, almost like free hanging. We've got ratchet traps on it, and we've got jack stands on it, but 
when you put the control arms on, we needed to kind of move it in place. And the, um, the entire axle had kind of hung down and moved over like um, passenger a little bit. But one of the really, I just had a metal cloak moment because they have these proprietary bushings inside these control arms. And the cool thing is they have so much lateral flex. All I had to do was just flex over the control arm and it popped up in there. No problem. It, it was really impressive. I mean, I saw the videos on it. This is the first time I actually experienced how much flex those control arms have, which should give you a more comfortable ride. We'll see when we actually take this thing for a ride, but that's pretty impressive. With the springs and the control arms in place, now all we needed to do was get the shocks in place. Uh, we got it. That's it, dude. Okay, small problem. Um, the metal cloak bracket for the shock mount uh, does not quite line up with the hole. So we're trying to, but it's like really, really close. So we're trying to just um, get a drill bit in there and just kind of make that hole a little bigger. It's tough because it's like not at a great uh, angle. I'm trying to wiggle it a little bit. Just wiggle it, just a... Uh, he, to he totally left me hanging on that. You're having a little bit of trouble because there's a spacer that's supposed to fit. See this spacer right here? It is supposed to fit in here between the frame and this new bracket. But the frame over time has just been bent slightly. So it doesn't really fit in there. So we're trying to uh, figure out the, uh, the best angle for it. Once the shock mounts are in place, attaching the bottom of the shocks to the mount is easy. It's getting it up high and getting it in the right hole and getting all the washers and bolts on it on top, that's the hard part. Whew. Okay, we are making progress. This thing is starting to look much more like a suspension now. So Chris is gonna finish attaching that uh, front passenger shock and I'm going to get started taking the steering stabilizer off and changing out the driving components here. This is what like the new uh, drag link will attach to and the um, steering stabilizer and all that. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this thing on. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this mount. So this is really, really cool. It lines up, so this is the drag link and the steering stabilizer mount and I don't know, some other stuff. Um, and you can kind of see the way this is just on the frame um, and it's got like a little connection here. Well, this thing is so, 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 first of all, it's really beefy, but it fits over it really nicely, right over the axle and into this right here. And it lines up like perfectly with the holes that are here. So that should make installation of this thing really easy. And then you've got this spot to connect things from. And right here, there's like a, a big U-bolt that goes here that connects um, to, from the, it goes around the axle and connects to the U-bolt. So should be pretty stable. We're gonna put this thing on and see how it looks right now. Through those two holes. Oh, my beautiful assistant, Chris. I was gonna say, it disembodied the <laughs> Track bar goes here and here. We are about to put it on. Are these all tightened? No. Okay, so we're gonna just get it all in and then tighten it all up. Yeah. We've got, we put ratchet straps back on to hold the axle because we need to line up the track bar with the holes. And so we're going to put the jack stands down and the weight of the axle is gonna be mostly supported by that, by the um, ratchet straps here. And we're just gonna gently move it over and then put it in the hole and then put the jack stands back up. And she's loose. <laughs> We got the track bar in, the bracket in. We still have to tighten everything up, but we're getting a lot closer to having the front done. Remember when I said the drag link was one of the trickiest pieces of the install? It starts with drilling out the existing hole with the 7 8 drill bit, which by the way, is kind of hard to find. We wound up using a step up bit. Once you drill the hole out, then you insert this spacer, which is designed to catch and hold the new drag link knuckle. You then tighten down the castle nut and insert a cotter pin, which is not as easy as it sounds, depending on how tightly that knuckle fits into the spacer. You then reconnect the steering stabilizer and the sway bar connectors, and you're basically done with all the heavy lifting on the front end. 
It's about midnight or so. Is it midnight, Chris? Uh, midnight 30. It's 12 30. And I don't know how long we've been. We've been at it for at least 12 hours today. So yeah. I think we're going to call it a night, come back, and hope that the rear goes smoother. You know what they say about the rear? You really want it to go smooth. And that's what we want <laughs> tomorrow. So Good morning. We are back. Both Chris and I got at least three hours of sleep, so we're feeling very refreshed, and we're gonna get to work. So what we've got here is basically the same as the front, except there's no driving components. We've got control arms, springs, sway bar connectors, shocks. The one thing in the back here that's gonna be a little bit tricky is Chris has um, some airbags in his springs, which has helped with um, sagging in the back when these things are super loaded up. So we're going to figure out how we want to handle those airbags. For the most part, it's going to be like copy and paste to what we did in the front, just hopefully much faster and much easier. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is pop off these sway bar connectors. Uh, should be pretty easy, we hope. And then uh, go ahead and swap out the brake lines. It says to just swap out the brake lines early on this. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. Just like on the front, removing the sway bar connectors in the rear is pretty easy work. So we're learning from our mistakes. Everything I take off now, I'm going to attach the bolt to. So if we need to reuse a bolt, we know exactly which piece it goes to. Next for us is swapping the rear brake lines, which is exactly the same as doing it on the front. Just be mindful of making a big mess and getting things connected properly. Also remember, you will have to bleed the brakes at the end. So now, um, the directions say to remove the rear track bar, the rear shocks, and rear springs. So we're gonna to try to divide and conquer. He's gonna take off the shocks, and I'm gonna make an attempt to take off the control bar, as well as this aftermarket um, control bar bracket. We're gonna put a new bracket, new control bar, new shocks, new everything! Oh, it's track bar. What did I say? Control bar. Track bar, not control bar. There's nothing special about removing the rear track bar and shocks. It's literally just taking the bolts out. We didn't run into any obstacles during this section. Yep, and we can just, just the driver's side rear control arms came out really easy, just a couple of bolts. But on the passenger side, the bolts were a little trickier and harder to get out. And this is because of the way the bolt heads are facing. It's been quite the journey to get it taken off. So. We felt the whole axle rocking back and forth. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. So I went ahead and threw a ratchet strap over the frame just to be safe. Yeah. So these jack stands are great, but I mean, there's no reason to not take extra precaution. <laughs> Woo! You okay? Control arm coming out. I thought that bolt you put was still in there. It disconnected all of the control arms before we took the springs out. The reason being we couldn't droop the axle enough with those airbags in there to get the springs out first, which is what the instructions tell you to do. So we took the control arms off, which means that like this is basically like a free floating axle at the moment. So we've got ratchet traps on it, we've got jack sands below it, but now we can at least droop it down enough just to unseat these springs. We're really, really close, but the springs are so tough. You know, you can't like just push up on them and get them out without using coil compressors, which we'd rather not do. So this is our solution for that. Um, we're certainly gonna have to droop them down a little bit farther to get the new springs in. So we'll just keep these ratchet straps on there for extra safety as we go, but we're about to get the springs on. We're getting ready to put uh, the new control arms on, but before we do that, we're gonna put on the control arm drop bracket. Look at this thing, it is super beefy. Um, and in any case, it, it goes on kind of like this and it gives you, kind of like this, gives you a place to attach to your control arms a little bit a little bit lower, drops it down a bit, so you can keep that uh, flat as, you can keep your control arms as flat as possible. So we're gonna get this, we're gonna get this thing on, then we're gonna get the control arms, and we're gonna get some springs in and keep going. This is super tricky because first you gotta get that, um, that bolt up on top through, and there's a spacer that goes in there because so that bolt's got to go through the spacer, and then there's a flag bolt that's inside the it's inside the frame, and you just you got to get up there with a flashlight or something so you can look at it to get that bolt in. It was really tricky, but once we could see it with the flashlight, it went a lot better. You can see that flag bolt there or the flag nut sticking out right there from the frame, um, and so now we just did a little uh, like a little cinch bolt right in there, and we're gonna move on to the next step. Great, but like. 
one. And we're just gonna cinch these parts in so this bracket is firmly attached. And then we'll have to drill a hole so we can have a new place to put in a flange nut, another wonderful flange nut uh, to attach the control arms. I just like to wiggle things around really fast and hope that they get tight. Okay, so we've got this on here and now we've got to drill a hole through the frame and we had to go get a 916th uh, drill bit. So like the one thing I'll say is this thing, and it's probably not Metal Coke's fault, it's probably like Jeep's fault, has some obscure drill bits. 916th is like the most obscure drill bit. I don't know, maybe if you're watching this, you, you have a collection of 916th drill bits, you think I'm crazy for saying that, but most drill bit like collections or the things that you standard drills that you bits that you buy in the store stop at about one half and this is like just a hair past one half it's nine sixteenths um and then we had a what was the other one a, uh seven eighths a seven eighths it's not an inch seven eighths it's seven eighths uh that we had to use yesterday for the um drag link so anyway a couple obscure bits if you're doing this yourself which if you're watching this video, you probably are doing this yourself. Just go get those drill bits ahead of time so you don't have to make mid-install trips to the store like Chris and I. So one of the things that Chris is doing right now to try to get these things exactly the right length is he's measured basically the threads on this one. And so he's trying to match the measurement of the threads on this one. I think we just about got it. Oh, there we go. Get bolt in there. <laughs> Michael Bolton. While connecting these control arms with bolts is pretty simple, getting them in the right spot can be a little bit more difficult because the axles are so heavy and sometimes you have to push up and rotate them towards the control arm in order to get them to connect. We just got the first rear coil on and they're much longer than the stock, not the stock, but the previous coils. Um, and we drooped it all the way down to the point where we were, we missed uh, how taut the brake line was. Nate's under his truck working right now, and he was like, brake line! So we <laughs> like get it cranked up, but we got the spring on there without using uh, the coil compressors, which we're trying to avoid at all costs. Yeah. Not at all costs, we're, trying, we're just trying to avoid it. Because it's a good way to die. Yeah, because they're really <laughs> dangerous and we don't want to mess with that. So good news is we got this one on. Um, bad news is it's gonna be there's no bad news, it's just good news. We got this one on and we're going to uh, keep marching forward. The rear bump stops are super easy to install. It's a bolt on either side, then you stack them together, connect them with screws. Super easy. Installing the rear shocks would be easy on a brand new rig, but because the Jeep is a little bit older and the frame spots are a little bit bent, we found ourselves again trying to get the shock into the shock mount that had been a little pinched over time. But with a little bit of hammer work and a little bit of elbow grease, it went in just fine. There we go. So we're about to put this super beefy control arm bracket um, on. And if you look at this thing, like if you're like me, you're like, what? is this how does this go anywhere um, and I, the thing that we looked at the instructions and we had to kind of piece it together but an easy way to remember is that this uh, rounded part here goes on top of the axle so if you know this has got to go on top of the axle it helps kind of find its place and this one is kind of funny because it like tucks back here next to the shock and then here's the original control arm you see that? Here's the original control arm bracket, and it just kind of pops over that, and you kind of have to shimmy it down, but this rounded part is gonna end up on top of the axle, and that, as long as that happens, you should probably be in the right spot. Okay, so we were just putting on this bracket, and um, in the instructions, it says to install this lower rear control arm, kind of like, it's like, okay, and put the control arms in the, you know, put the front bolt on and then attach the back ones. Well, then you get to this point in instructions and it's like, oh, you, there's a bolt here that it's supposed to go through. So we're gonna have to back out this lower control, control arm, the, the rear lower control arm bolt and redo it and put it through this thing, which is fine. Um, I just wish we would have caught that uh, like two hours ago when we put this control arm in. So that's just a little process on the instructions that were kind of flipped, but that's fine. We're gonna get this thing out, get it back in, 
Get this sucker on. Pulling this bolt out meant we had to reattach the control arm, which was easier said than done, but we got it. That is that Duraflex right there, baby. Duraflex proprietary bushings helping the install. The bracket then has a spacer that needs a little bit of encouragement to get in place, a through bolt that keeps it connected to the axle, and then of course the U-joint that also keeps it steadied on the axle. Okay, Chris and I are declaring defeat for the evening. We have to go to work tomorrow. There's a big storm that's brewing right outside. There's thunder and lightning and everything. We are so tired because we have spent three days straight in this shop. Um, we are super disappointed that we didn't get all the way through it, but we will be back in a day and we will finish this thing and we will test drive it and it will be amazing. And so stay tuned, we'll be, I will be right back and we will finish this install. Okay, I am back. This has got to be the last day we work on this thing. Uh, we are really, really close and so I'm really optimistic that we're gonna get done. Chris is actually at work. He's gonna come join me as soon as he gets off work. I took the afternoon off so I could get a head start on this. And so I'm going to pick back up with this control arm drop bracket and try to get the rest of it done in the next few hours or so. Working on this without Chris let me know that it's truly something that one person can do, but it is much, much easier with two people there. So I was really glad when Chris showed up to jump in again. Okay, so first of all, Chris is here. Hey, Chris. Chris got off work and came, joined us. He doesn't have a mic on yet though. Um, so we just put this um, the spring in, this coil, and we use coil compressors. And I gotta say, this is one of the most nerve wracking things I've ever done because it just feels like it's about to kill you at any moment. It kind of feels like you're about to get hit by lightning. And we were putting it on here and it slipped and dropped and slammed on the floor. And Chris and I both ran for the door like it was a bomb that was about to go off. So like my advice is if you can avoid using these things, just save yourself the stress. But drooping it, we, we drooped it as far as we think it'll go. And so we felt like we had to use the coil compressors, otherwise we would not have done it. We got it in there now, so half the battle's over. Now we gotta slowly release it onto the axle, so. I cannot stress to you how important it is to be really careful when working with coil compressors. Just go slow, accept it's gonna take a long time, and be safe. Okay, we're about to put on the track bar, and there's a couple things you should know. So, this track bar is beefy. Beef. Um, and it, so it's adjustable. So the adjustable side goes passenger, which is up, and the bolt uh, comes through it this way. So like the bolt head is on, let's say the front side of the, of the track bar. All right, so it goes like this, this curves up, this part curves up around the pumpkin. This goes into the bracket here and the bolt is going in, so the bolt head is on the rear side going in. Has a has a special Allen head bolt for down here that actually it's cut, the bracket has like a countersunk hole, so it'll be nice and flush. So we're gonna put this on, and then we're basically gonna be done installing all the components and just tighten things up. The track bar, just like everything else, needs a little bit of encouragement to get into place. So we've had a little bit of trouble getting this track bar. Uh, in there, the holes didn't quite line up. We didn't really want to like shorten the bar. So we've kind of been working it back and forth. And the good news is there's enough flex in these bushings that we could get the hole just lined up. But we've been working on this for probably 10 minutes, which seems like a very long time. But in the grand scheme of things, in terms of this install, it's very, very small. Oh, oh, you okay? Yeah. Once you're done attaching and installing all of the new pieces of the suspension, go through and torque every single bolt to spec. All torqued. Okay, we're all torqued. Now I'm just going to uh, secure the channel locks on all the control arms with a pipe wrench. It's the only thing we could find that was big enough. Um, and Chris is gonna zip tie the brake lines and um, the other stuff that's around the, the wheels and then we'll blew the brakes. A pipe wrench for the channel lock is not my first choice, but it works in a pinch. Is there any method here to your madness? Yes, um, keeping zip ties in your mouth is a great way to keep them organized and they also are also delicious. <laughs> Outside of the snack, like what are you doing here with the, with the brake lines? You're just kind of zip tying them together so they're... Yeah, so there was uh, clips that went on them that, you know, of course aren't on 
um, the new brake lines. And so we're zip tying, not very, very hard, but there was like these little rubber isolators on there. So I'm yeah. using those. And of course you don't want to zip tie it tight enough that you pinch off the brake line. Although these are pretty robust. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then just kind of tucking this back up and making sure everything's out of the way. I'm going to kind of do my best to keep this from, you know, being in a spot where it's going to rub up against a sharp edge. Right. So these clips have a nice, um, kind of a camber to them or a nice edge that's kind of smooth. And so I'll have right. it kind of go up and over that area and just tuck it back up and in. With everything torqued and tied, it was now time to set the steering with a drag link. Okay, so we just got done setting the drag link, which means that um, you have to set your wheels uh, on center. And because the drag link uh, came from Metal Cloak without being um, set for this Jeep, which is totally understandable, you kind of have to set it. So you set the wheels straight and then you crank on the drag link until your steering wheel is also straight. We just got done doing that. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. Okay, here's our setup. Um, we're going to bleed the brakes. We've got this little brake bleeding kit from Harbor Freight. It has uh, air pressure that comes into it, creates a vacuum, and we're basically just going to drain the brake fluid with all the air bubbles all out right. until the brake fluid is clean, no bubbles, and then we will move on to the next wheel. We let the brake bleeder kit run until we could see no air bubbles in the line. With everything attached, torqued, tied, and bled, it was time to put the tires back on, lower the Jeep down, and see what this baby was like. Oh, Chris, it looks good. Chris, it looks good, dude. It does not look too high at all. No, it doesn't. So Chris, I hear there's like one more thing that you need to install on this. One more thing. While it's fun to bask in the glory of all your hard work and look at how amazing your rig on this new suspension looks, you should also think about getting it checked by professionals when you're done. Okay, so we got that suspension installed on Chris's rig, and now we're gonna go take it to some specialists in Nampa, Idaho at a place called K Suspension, who are certified uh, metal cloak installers to check our work. I'm really looking forward to having them take a look and see what we did right and see what we did wrong. We chose to take Chris's Jeep to K Suspension in Nampa, Idaho, where Rafi, the owner, has been doing this for years, and the entire shop is certified by Metal Cloak as professional installers. Uh, there's just a few things that you know we noticed during the inspection. So the axles aren't center. Uh, you were about an uh, inch and a half off on the rear and about a half inch off up front. Your thrust is definitely off. We have about a quarter inch variance as far as where the axle is shifted. Uh -huh. So we'll adjust that on the ground as well when we take out the control arms. As far as the lift goes, did a really good job installing everything. You know, the only loose thing I found was that front track bar jam nut. But overall, you did a good job for your first time. How many, how many times do people do an install themselves and like mess it up and not have it checked and not fix it? Yeah, we see that a lot. Okay. And then we give them the bad news of, oh, hey, this is completely worn out. And they're like, oh, it's only a year old. It's a lot of miles on a year to go off of bad geometry. So. Yeah. All right, Chris, they looked at the Jeep. They fixed everything that we did incorrectly. And it wasn't too bad. They gave us a solid B. Yeah. And you said there wasn't anything that we did that was like, you know, really wrong. Just a lot of, uh, a lot of beginner mistakes. Right. Yeah. So there's like, you know, some, some washers that got left off. Um, some of the tech, tech, the torque specs were off a little uh, bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, those are things that they were able to take off, take care of pretty quickly. The biggest thing was that the rear axle was dog legging. So it wasn't actually lined up to center. And so they took some time to re center that. That's probably mm -hmm. the biggest thing that, that we didn't do correctly. And then, you know, shock mount bolts, um, stabilizers and things were just in the wrong place. We had one control arm that was bending the wrong way. So, uh, so things like that, but that's why it's good to get this stuff checked by professionals. And these guys are phenomenally great. Like yeah. they know metal cloak stuff. They know Jeeps, they know suspension. So I'm so glad that we took it here. I uh, hope you learned more about how to install an, uh, a new suspension on your Jeep, a new metal cloak suspension on your Jeep. We had fun watching this. We're now going to go try to break this thing on a trail and bring it right back here to get fixed. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.